Section 2.1 is on page 91. Talks about the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. This is really a continuation of 2.2, or 2.2 is continuation of this. Here, we start off with page 100, number 16. Inverse cosine of 1. So this is asking the cosine of which angle gives me a 1. That must be 0. And here it's asking the cosine of which angle. So all of these numbers, 16 through 20, all of these are angles. The cosine of which angle gives me a negative one. Well, we know that's a special angle. But I can only, if I'm dealing with an inverse cosine, I can never be in quadrant 3 or 4. It has to be positive. You can't say negative. Inverse tangent of negative 1, I could get around that by saying that's negative the inverse tangent of 1. The tangent of which angle gives me a 1? That's pi over 4. I could look at that triangle and figure it out. Inverse tangent is radical 3 over 3. If it's positive, everything is in quadrant 1. So the tangent of which angle gives me radical 3 over 3, and there is my triangle radical 3 over 3 in case you don't see it by the way if you rationalize that's really 1 over radical 3 so the tangent of which angle gives me 1 over radical 3 1 over radical 3 it has to be pi over 6 and if the inverse sign is negative again I could use the even odd that's wise and what that does, that simply means negative, and this is in quadrant 1, the sine of which angle gives me radical 3 over 2, sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. Of course, I could look at this too and say sine is the y. It's not this. It's right there. So it has to be pi over 3. Either or. And 26, if I take the negative out, that's the inverse sine of radical 2 over 2 and that would be negative and the sine of which angle gives me radical 2 over 2 I know that's pi over 4 and that would be my final answer okay on this problem I would make use of even odd identity or I could just say you know what let's get this out of the way this didn't come up in the previous section. So, negative pi over 10. The reference angle is pi over 10. Right? So, I'm taking the inverse sign. My answer will be either pi over 10 or negative pi over 10 because inverse sign could be either in quadrant 1 if it's positive and in negative rotation. So, in this quadrant, is sine positive or negative? In this case, it's negative. My answer will be negative pi over 10. I look at number 44. We are going to do a problem like that, number 40, 42. I'll come back to it. I just want to tackle on the idea a bit differently and then come back to that and show you how that works. So, if I look at this problem, I'm looking for an angle. My answer is an angle. Well, I need to figure out what this is. The reference is pi over 3. A pi over 3, the cosine of that is, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Or pi over 3, the cosine is 1 half. Where is negative 5 pi over 4? Negative 5 pi over 4 is right there. If you don't like this, take negative 5 pi over uh, 3, not 4, 3, and add 2 pi to it. You could always do that. that, because that's not an inverse. That would be a pi over 3. So in quadrant 1, we're talking about positive, and inverse cosine is positive in quadrant 1. We know the reference angle is pi over 3 already from right there. I'm just checking if it's positive or negative. If this value is positive, my answer is the reference angle same here but if this angle would have been if this value would have been negative that would have been pi over 3 in the second quadrant 
for tangent. And I added an example just to clarify this idea. How about this problem? Because some students tie positive and negative to the angle. Look, this angle is negative, this answer is positive. This angle is positive, and sometimes the value is negative. It doesn't matter. It's not whether the angle is positive or negative. It is which quadrant does the angle end up in. That's what matters. So this is, again, an angle theta, pi over 3. I already know the reference angle is pi over 3. Well, it's very simple. In an inverse cosine, if this quantity is positive, I'm in quadrant 1, it will be pi over 3. If this quantity is negative, I'll be in quadrant 2, and that will be 2 pi over 3. Well, this is an inverse cosine, and for pi over 3, that is 1 half. But where's 4 pi over 3? 4 pi over 3 is right there. And in this quadrant, isn't this negative? So what is pi over 3 in the second quadrant? The answer will be 2 pi over 3. 46. Same deal. I'm looking for an angle. Pi over 3 is the reference angle. That doesn't change. That's easy. If the inverse tangent is positive, the answer is pi over 3. But if this quantity is negative, then I'm going to get negative pi over 3. And that's the confusing part. That's the inverse tangent of, and let's see how this works. So pi over 3, pi over 3 tangent is radical 3. Where is negative 2 pi over 3? Negative 2 pi over 3 is in that quadrant. And in that quadrant, tangent is positive. Since the inverse tangent is positive, we're in quadrant 1, and we would use the reference angle. How about number 42? This is an angle. This is not a standard angle. You can't say pi over 7 is the, is the reference. Only pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6 work that way. Just because of the algebra, not because that's always the case. So, first things first. I'm looking for an inverse sine. And I need the reference angle. So, I need to draw this. If I run negative 3 pi over 4. negative 3 pi over 7. Who's going to tell me what is the reference angle? Remember, if I go in negative rotation, that's negative 7 pi over 7. So, if I run to negative 3 pi over 4, uh, negative 3, I keep on saying 4, forgive me. Negative 3 pi, oh, you know what? I think I got it wrong. Negative 3 pi over 7, because I kept on thinking 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 7 is right there. Right? And how do I know that? This is 0. Neg this is negative 7 pi over 7. This is half of it. Negative 3.5. Right? And this is less than that. So negative 3 pi over 7 is right there. The reference angle is 3 pi over 7. Right? So my answer is either going to be positive 3 pi over 7 or negative pi over 7 depending whether this is plus or minus if this is plus 3 pi over 7 if this is negative negative 3 pi over 7 if i look at in this quadrant isn't that negative right so that would be negative 3 pi over 7 all right again it's an inverse. I know the reference angle is pi over 4. That's really easy to do. The question, if it's positive, my answer is pi over 4. But if it's negative, my answer is negative pi over 4. So let's see how this plays. Negative 3 pi over 4. So this is a value of radical 2 over 2. But where is negative 3 pi over 4? Negative 3 pi over 4 is right there. You could take negative 3 pi over 4 and add 2 pi to it because that's a sign. You can do that to the inverse. Over 4, that's 8. 
5 pi over 4. And isn't 5 pi over 4 right there? So in this quadrant, tan is positive, which means this is negative. And since it's negative and the reference angle is pi over 4, the answer is negative pi over 4. If I want to solve this equation, how do you solve any equation in math? You isolate the name by itself. This is an inverse trig function equation. So you isolate that name by itself. And to go from an inverse section k, that's the cosine of pi over 2. And the cosine of pi over 2 is uh, 0. Same deal here. To solve this equation, you isolate the inverse trig function by itself. The inverse sine of 3x equals negative pi over 6. That means 3x is the sine of negative pi over 6. 3x equals negative. And the sine of pi over 6, sine of pi over 6, is 1 half. And the reason it's negative, you're in this quadrant, in this quadrant, the value is negative. So x is negative 1 over 6. And there's your homework in this section.